Rejoice in the Lord and overflow with joy. It's time to be joyful in life. Why? Because the Bible says so. Over and over again in the Bible, God tells us to rejoice and be joyful again and again. But some people, they can't do it. Some people can't rejoice. They can't be joyful. And it's for due to many reasons. Some people, they focus too much on their, uh, their, their life problems, their worries and their fears. Other people are so depressed that they can't be joyful. Other people, they're trapped in the cycle of a negative mind chatter and they can't snap out of it and be joyful. Some people are trapped in bad company so they can't be joyful. You know, bad company draws your energy and they can't be joyful and yet other people just don't know how to be joyful but that's what we're going to talk about in this video and it's very important to be joyful why because God tells us to be joyful God says rejoice God says be joyful in fact the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5 verses 23 to uh, 22 to 23 one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is joy God wants you to be joyful because that's one of the fruits of the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, how to get out of that melancholy and into joy. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to stop doing the things that block your joy. Because there are certain things that we do that actually block our joy. So I'm going to share seven things that you need to stop doing because those things are actually stealing they're snatching your joy and that's what we're going to talk about and don't get me wrong there are more than seven things but i've chosen the top seven that i believe to be true for me so let's start with number one the first thing that you need to stop doing because it's actually stealing your joy is stop drowning yourself in the worries of this world Stop drowning yourself in the troubles of this world. Stop drowning yourself. Okay, you've got a problem in life. Stop drowning in it. Pray over it. Fast over it. Take it to God. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Stop drowning in, in those worries. If we go to the Bible in um, Luke chapter 11, uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 32, then Jesus said to his disciples, do not worry. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you will wear. Let me read that again. So Jesus said to his disciples, do not worry about your life, or what you will eat, or, what, or about your body, or what you will wear. Stop worrying about the things of life. Stop worrying about this, that, or the other. Whether it's your finances, whether it's this, whether it's your job, whether it's what you're going to eat, whether it's what you're going to wear. Stop worrying about the troubles of, of life. When we start worrying about the things of life, it, it begins to steal our joy. And some people do this knowingly and some people do it unknowingly. Their mind is so conditioned in such a way that all it knows how to do now, all it's accustomed to, all it's familiar with doing is just worry, worry, worry and creating worst case scenarios in your mind. Guess what? Jesus says, don't do that. Jesus says, stop. Don't worry about the, uh, God knows what you need. God knows that you need to pay your rent. God knows that you need to you need to put food on your table. God knows that you need this. God, did. God will provide for all your needs. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. We need to have faith in God's word that he will do as he promises to do. Because if he does not do what he promises to do, then God becomes a liar. And God is not a liar. God says, I will provide for you. I will heal you. I will help you. I will lift you up. I will strengthen you. I will give you power. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. And we need to have faith in his word. So stop worrying because worrying is not from God. Because if it was from God, God would tell you to worry. But it's one of the verses in the Bible that is repeated multiple times together with anxiety and fear do not worry do not fear do not anxious do not be anxious do not worry do not fear do not, do not be anxious it's over and over and over again and so jesus says don't do it so that's the first thing that actually steals your joy the second thing that you need to stop doing because it's stealing your joy is you need to stop that negative mind chatter you know some people's minds are so accustomed with uh, creating worst case scenarios in the mind that the mind is just so used to just playing on autopilot now it's just on goal all the time negativity 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 that's not of god by the way the bible tells us in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 we cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought captive into the obedience of jesus christ so when a thought comes into your mind, you grab that thought captive 
and you bring it under the obedience of Jesus Christ. How? Well, you align that thought because you've got it captive now. You align that thought with the word of God and you see if it is in alignment with the word of God. And if it's in alignment with the word of God, guess what? Keep it. If it's not in alignment with the word of God, you reject that thought. You say, I will not receive this thought. I will not accept this thought. I do not want this thought. And then you get in the word of God and you replace that thought that you've thrown out with a new thought that is of the word of God. Because if you just leave the mind empty, it's going to fill it up. Something's going to fill in the mind. So you deliberately fill the mind with the word of God and find the verse that is talking about that very thing that you're thinking about, that very thing that you're worrying about. So if it was a negative mind chatter about money, find the Bible verse that's talking about money. It says, God says, I will provide for you. I will be there for you. I will, I will, I will, I will. I will. If it's about health, then fight that you were worrying about. And then once you've thrown that thought out and you said, I will not receive this thought, when you find verses that are talking about health, God says, I will heal you. God says, by his stripes, you are healed. And so on and so forth. And you start replacing these thoughts with thoughts of Christ christ-like thoughts so that was the second thing the third thing that steals your joy and uh, this is a powerful one is bad company you know people may see it as something so not so important it's very 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 important you become like the people you hang out with you know and when you start hanging around with people who drain your energy people who want to use you people who are not good for you people who have demons or satan operating through them deliberately to target you've got to be very very careful of this because these people will bring you down and they will steal your joy they will strip you of your joy every single time and the majority of the time it comes from members of your own family you've got to be careful of that the bible tells us in first uh, corinthians uh, chapter 15 verse 33 do not be deceived bad company corrupts good character don't be deceived because the bad company you're hanging out with, they will corrupt your good character and they will steal your joy. They will steal your joy. You've got to be very careful. You've got, you got, you got people draining your energy. People just stealing your energy. People are there only to take, 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 take from you. You've got to be very, very, very careful of these people. It steals your joy. You can't be joyful in bad company. How are you going to be joyful in bad company? Number four. The, the next thing that uh, steals your joy and you've got to be very very careful stop doing it is you, you know you're not walking by god you're not walking with god you're not walking rightly by god you've got to be very uh, careful of these things if you're not walking by god then how are you going to have joy i mean the, the the bible tells us in galatians 5 the fruit of the holy spirit is joy if you're not walking right by God and you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not walking in the ways of God, then how are you supposed to have that joy? That joy comes from the Holy Spirit. It's something given to you by God through his Holy Spirit. So if you're not walking by God, if you're not walking with the Holy Spirit, how are you, there's no other place to get joy from. You can get superficial happiness or superficial joy by the things of this world, but it's a fake joy. It's, it, it, it could be a lust disguised as joy it could be narcissistic people disguised as joyful people you know you get into these narcissistic relationships you think they're good they think they're joyful whoops all of a sudden things start to become uncovered you see that it's no longer joyful that was a fake joy it's actually a narcissist i'm dealing with and it could be anything it could be a job thing it could be a money thing it could be it could be uh, uh, anything when you're not walking right by god you will fall into all sorts of traps you, you, and then you start to seek superficial love from the world and yeah, superficial uh, joy from the world. So now I need to chase this new wife and now I need to chase that woman or that man. And now, now I need to chase that new Netflix or now I need to chase that new car, that new uh, entertainment, that new alcohol, that new this, that you're always chasing. You're looking for this superficial uh, uh, joy to fill in this emptiness that can only be filled in by the very God who created you. Real joy comes only from the Holy Spirit. There are no two places. There is no other place to get joy from. So if you go to the Bible, the Bible tells us in Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with your, you fill me with joy in your presence. Let me start again. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So, so what the Bible is telling us here, let me, let me read that again. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with your... You feel... What's going on? Let me start again. You make known to me the path of life. You feel me... You feel with joy... Just 
just keep getting stuck for some reason. You make known to me your path. You fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. Okay. So what the Bible is telling us, there is a path of life that leads to joy. There is a path of life that leads to joy. And that path of life is God. You make known to me the path of life. Someone's talking to God here. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with your, you fill with joy in your, you fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. Anyway, so yeah, there is a path that leads to joy and that path is God. So let me get out of that because that keeps making me stuck for some reason. Okay, so we've got to walk right by God. There is a path of life that leads to joy and that path is God. But now I, I want to know why I was getting stuck there. Do you know why? It's the way it's written. I would say you fill me with your joy. But this one says you fill me with joy in your presence. So I would put the two words the joy and the you, I would have turned them around. So everyone, I would have put before the others. Every time I got there, I would get stuck because it's not how my mind is used to reading it. But anyway, that's how the Bible wants to write it. So that's how I'm going to read it. So anyway, that was uh, number four. When you're not walking right with God, then you, you, you will always find obstacles in your path that steal your joy. Whether it's a, a work thing that's stealing your joy or a relationship that's stealing your joy. <clears throat> or a habit that's stealing your joy when you're not walking right by God there are multiple things that are going to steal your joy not just one multiple things so we need to be walking right by God and that was number four number five the fifth thing that is possible that is stealing your joy not possible is definitely stealing from your joy is when you're not reading the holy bible why because the holy bible is your spiritual food it's your spiritual food so when you eat physical food like a burger or a salad or a fish or something like that you're feeding your physical body and that's that's to nourish and that's to strengthen your physical body but when you're reading the, the holy bible that feeds your soul that that feeds your spirit because that's the, the word of god is a spiritual food and that feeds your spirit and when you feed the spirit then you begin to grow in spirit you begin to strengthen yourself in spirit you become strengthened in spirit the spirit becomes strengthened and you need spiritual food the bible tells us in jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 your words were found and i ate them in other words the eating the, the spiritual food of god it represents eating the spiritual food of god your words were found and i ate them your words became my joy so you're eating the spiritual food which is the word of god and those words become your joy your words were found and I ate them. Your words became my joy and rejoicing of my heart. So those words become your joy and the rejoicing of your heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. So you need to read the word of God, get into the word of God. And Bible verses are going to start jumping out at you. Not only God knows when you need joy. Not only the, the, the Bible verses that are going to bring you more joy. Because it says it here. Your words were found and I ate them. Your words became my joy and rejoicing of my heart. And so Bible verses, when you're reading the Bible, Bible verses are going to start jumping out at you. God knows which verse to make jump out at you. God is going to make the right verse jump out at you. And it will be the, word, the verse that you need to see at that exact time. And it will just jump out, jump, jump out at you. Not only will it jump out at you, that word that jumps out of you will be filled with revelation. You're going to see so deep into it. There's going to be so much meaning that you, you maybe you never saw before. The Holy Spirit is going to give you revelation into that, what you're reading. And it's going to give you a whole new perspective, a whole new meaning. Of, and it, it will be your joy. It will be, it will, your heart will be rejoicing. God knows what to make jump out at you. And the right word will jump out. The right verse will jump out at you, I promise. And it's going to give you direction. It's going to give you knowledge. It's going to give you everything you need at that moment in time. Because it's your food. It's your spiritual food. It's your joy. It's the rejoicing of your heart. That's what the Bible says. So that was number five. It's you need to get in the Bible. Because when you're out of the Bible, you're not, and you're not filling your mind with the word of God. And I promise you, your mind is being filled up with something else. Because that's what the mind does. It takes in information. It's designed to take in information. If you're not deliberately taking in this spiritual food, this information, then from somewhere else, 
you're taking in some kind of information. It could be from YouTube, it can be from Netflix, it can be from something someone said, it could be from a billboard that you're driving down the road and you see, it could be something you're scrolling through social media. Your brain is taking in all this information, it's just taking, taking, taking in. <clears throat> you don't want it to be taking in just any random information, you want it to be taking in the word of God, because that's what's going to bring you joy and rejoice to your heart, because the Bible says so. So that was number five. The sixth thing that uh, steals your joy and uh, it doesn't allow you to rejoice is when you're not praying. You've got to be in prayer. You have to pray. Pray, 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 pray. And pray doesn't mean that, you know, you've got to set one hour aside now to pray. Although it, does, it could mean that too. Pray could be in one minute prayer here one minute prayer there i mean for example every time i get in my car i pray for one minute you know god help me reach my destination and back home safely jesus please sit in the car with me and so on and so forth but i could be out shopping or anything and i'm i could be praying to god i could be saying thank you just just I'm grateful just thank you that you know that i have money to be doing this shopping because some people don't um thank you for this thank you for that or uh, God is always coming to my mind. God is always in my mind, and uh, and I want to I want to grow in that field. I want to spend more time with God. You know, I spend time with God half an hour in the morning, and more in prayer half an hour. But then I read the Bible and do other things that are of God. And then around half an hour in the evening, and every time I get in my car, which sometimes it could be nothing a day, or it could be a few times a day, and then throughout the day, you know i'm always i'm doing something that has to be with god god's always in my mind and so it's all a form of prayer a form of prayer is also tears are a form of prayer you know without speaking any words and just sitting there in the presence of god is a form of prayer god knows what's in your mind god knows what's in your heart and sometimes you you can ask the holy spirit to intercede for you let the holy spirit intercede for you speak through you bring to mind what you're going to say or sometimes you can pray in tongues you know there are two types of tongues in the bible now that are said tongues there's a tongues when the disciples were speaking in a foreign language which is a language that other that exists that other people could understand but they hadn't practiced and they just supernaturally were able to speak that foreign language but there's also another uh, tongue which is speaking a language that does not exist this is the bible says this is a language that is only known to you and the god in other words you're, it says you're let me find that you're speaking mysteries between you and god you're speaking a mystery between you and God. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. It says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. So this is a language, this is a tongue that doesn't exist. It's not like you're speaking French or Spanish or German without ever practicing it and all of a sudden you know how to speak it although that is a tongue too and the bible talks about that too it's talking about um, a tongue that is unknown to man for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to god indeed no one understands them for they utter mysteries by the spirit so they're speaking mysteries by the spirit to god so there's two types of tongues in the bible just 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 to get clear clear about that um so uh, you, you need to get in uh, prayer. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe in that you have received it and it shall be yours. So you can ask for revelation. You could ask for wisdom. You could ask for insight. And remember, ask for things that are in alignment with God's word. Don't just start going and just start randomly asking for anything uh, like god's just gonna like god's a genie and it's gonna start granting you all your wishes no this is this is we're not dealing with a, de a genie here with this is god we're praying to god start uh, pray for things that are in alignment with god's word god is always going to back up his word if it's his word is going to back it up don't ask for things that are opposing to god he's not going he's not going to back that up he's not going to go against himself and so Ask, ask God for things that are in alignment with you. Ask him to help you produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. It says, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love and joy and, and uh, patience and uh, 
peace and kindness and gentleness and self-control and so on and so forth go and read it and and ask god to help you produce the fruits of the holy spirit and joy joy is one of the fruits of the holy spirit and so get into prayer and god will show you ask god to give you a revelation what is in your heart what is in your mind what is in your life that is actually stealing your joy ask god to reveal that to you and then ask him to give you the strength to get out of that and if god guides you to fast then do a fast as well fast is powerful very powerful fast is very powerful i'm Look, I've been fasting for almost two years, on and off, on and off, on and off. And I, I believe and I would like to be fasting for the rest of my life. So powerful. It does so many good things. And I've got a few prayer, a few uh, videos on uh, uh, fasting. So get into your Bible. Get into uh, and pray. 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 Prayer is very powerful. And that was number six. The seventh thing that steals your joy. Yeah, ask God to show you what is stealing your joy. And then ask God to show you ways to bring more joy into your life. And show you ways how to exercise the fruit of the of the spirit which is one of them is joy and, and do that so the seventh thing that is actually stealing your joy is lack of trust there's a lack of trust in your life somewhere i believe and uh, so you don't believe that god will be faithful you could be dealing with a financial issue and there's a lack of trust and you don't believe god will be faithful faithful with what faithful that he's going to stick to his word he says i'm going to help you he says i'm going to provide for you he says, I'm going to be there for you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I will lift you up. He says, I have plans for you to prosper. He says, when you pass through the waters, they will not, uh, 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 they will not sweep over you. So I've got it written here. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This is Isaiah 42. Uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not get burnt. Actually, for some reason, now that I'm here, let me just read all of them. So that was the first one. The next one is Isaiah 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 19 through 20. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth shall you not know it i will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert the beasts of the field will honor me the jackals and the ostriches because i give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen let's read the next one isaiah 49 verse 9 says say to the prisoners go forth to them that are in darkness show yourselves they shall feed in the ways of god and their pastors shall be in all the high places. All the high places. And let's read the next one. Isaiah 45 verses 2 to 3. It says, God says, and see this is another promise. <clears throat> I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in pieces the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. That faith I'm talking about. See, somewhere, whatever your problem is, whether you're going through financial problems or health problems or uh, whatever difficulty you're going through in life somewhere there's a lack of trust you don't have faith that god will stick to his word and this steals your joy this steals your joy because when you're going through let's say financial problems and you don't have faith that god will, will stick to his word and he's going to get you out of that then you start to worry then how am i going to pay that then how am i going to do that and that all of that worry steals your joy this was the first step i told you stop drowning in the worries of this world stop drowning in the worries of life have faith have faith have faith the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding but in all of your ways submit to him he will guide your path not you not the other not the boss not the spouse but he will guide your path there's another one psalm chapter 16 verse 20 those who listen to instructions will prosper whose instructions not mine not theirs god's instructions 
Those who what are God's instructions. They're all here. Those who and I've just read one out now in Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's another instruction. Those who listen to instructions will prosper. Those who trust in the Lord will be joyful. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. And those who trust in the Lord will be joyful. It's as simple as that. That's, God doesn't lie. If it's written, then that's how it is. If it's written in the Bible, that's how it is. Whether you believe it or not, that's how it is. And that's the truth. And so those were just seven just very quick uh, tips on things that could be stealing your joy. And there could be more. So take it to God and tell, ask, you know, ask God to reveal to you what is stealing your joy through the Holy Spirit. And if you're doing any of these things that we've discussed today, you know, to ask God, take it to prayer. Always take it to prayer and ask God to help you through these things. Ask God to help you get out of these things. And listen, let me tell you something about the mind, something about the human mind. The mind can't be in two places at the same time. So you can't be thinking about your mum and your dad at the same time. You can't be uh, in depression and in joy at the same time. You can't be thinking good and evil at the same time. It's either one or the other, one or the other. You could be thinking bad and then good, but it's because you've come out of this thought and you've entered another thought. You could be thinking about your mum and then your dad, but it's because you've come out of this thought and you've entered, you're entertaining this thought now. But you can't be entertaining two thoughts at the same time in your mind at the exact same time. It can't be. And so you can't be, I said all that to say this, you can't be both depressed and joyful at the same time. You can't be both worried and joyful at the same time. So if you're not joyful, it's because somewhere you're allowing your mind to be entertained with something that is stealing the joy. And all you've got to do is, through Jesus Christ, we spoke of this earlier, take that thought captive and bring it into the obedience of, under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Change your thought. Take, see that thought? No, I'm not going to receive this thought. Put yourself in the Bible and fill your mind with those kind of thoughts. And, and find scriptures that speak about joy and scriptures that God tells you, be joyful, be joyful, be joyful. Let your heart rejoice. Let your heart rejoice. Let your heart rejoice. So, anyway, if you haven't already heard about my book, it's live on Amazon, paperback and Kindle. Who is God? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. Paperback and Kindle and stay tuned because I've got more books coming out. I'm currently so, so, so busy writing. I'm currently writing three books. That's why I'm, a, um, I'm, a, I'm under a lot of uh, spiritual attack because... Um, Satan doesn't want me to write them books, but God does, and God always wins, so the books are going to be written. And so, anyway, uh, if you want us to pray over you, then send us your prayer requests using the link below, and the link to my book is also below, and there are more links there for you, so look at what resonates with you, and until next time, God bless you, and may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and let's close with a prayer. Our Father... Who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory in jesus name amen